Let me ask you a question. How would it feel to have a brain that's constantly upgrading itself 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year? I'm talking about a high performance brain. This high performance brain is gonna allow you to pick up new habits and strategies quicker than ever before. Maybe you're trying to pick up new habits and strategies from people like Tony Robbins, maybe it's Gary Vaynerchuk, or maybe it's Tim Ferriss, whoever it may be for you. I'm talking about a high performance brain that's gonna allow you to be more productive and more efficient. It's gonna allow you to get more done in less time. While at the same time, it's gonna give you insane amounts of energy and make you more adaptable and more resilient to stress. I'm talking about hacking something called neuroplasticity, and neuroplasticity is essential for building this high performance brain. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more on what neuroplasticity is and how you can use these seven super simple strategies to hack your own neuroplasticity. For a long time, it was thought that once your brain hit its early 20s, it stopped developing. That was it, and you were stuck with the hardware that you got. But thankfully, thanks to science, we know that's not true. Your brain continues to grow, adapt, and change, and actually rewire itself based on the things that you're learning, the things that you're doing, the new experiences that you're having, and your neuroplasticity is highly affected by how you choose to live your life, which can make those new habits and strategies and those things you're trying to implement in your life much more challenging or so much easier. So let's talk about the seven strategies that we have to increase your rate of neuroplasticity. All right, so the first two that I have for you here are really to help your body better adapt to stress. One of the biggest killers of your neuroplasticity is going to be stress. Stress has been shown to dramatically reduce neuroplasticity. This is why when you hear and see some of these studies of children who have a lot of stress when they're younger, their neuroplasticity goes into the gutter and they have a hard time developing throughout life because their neuroplasticity based on all that stress that they're under just hit the tank. And so with these two strategies, the real key is to help your body better adapt to the stress that you're under. And obviously one of the first ones here is sleep. Sleep is absolutely critical, especially good quality sleep in helping your body better adapt to stress and keeping your brain neuroplastic. So if you're someone who's maybe a high performer and you're trying to be an entrepreneur, starting a new company, and you're thinking I can get more out of less sleep, I'll have more hours in the day if I only sleep four hours a night, well guess what, your brain neuroplasticity is gonna go into the tank and you're gonna really suffer because of it and you're actually gonna be less productive and less efficient because of that. So don't think that you're cutting hours in your sleep that you're gonna be more productive. You may actually, and science has shown that you're actually gonna be less productive. Number two is going to be meditation. Meditation has shown to have profound benefits for your brain, including increasing your rate of neuroplasticity, but also it's been shown to literally build a thicker brain. So it's actually gonna help your brain in more ways than one. Another one is going to be exercise. Now I want to preface with exercise. There's really two types of exercise that have been shown to increase your rate of neuroplasticity. One of them is going to be aerobic exercise. The other one is going to be high intensity exercise. And the main reason is, is that both of these, more aerobic than high intensity, have been shown to increase your production of what's called BDNF. It's called brain-derived neutrophic factor. And BDNF has been shown to be very helpful in terms of neuroplasticity. It's been shown to increase production in new brain cells. It's been shown to increase synaptic connections within the brain. So it helps your brain make more new connections and also preserves healthy brain cells. So it's neuroprotective in that. And aerobic exercise and high intensity exercise in particular have been shown to have the most profound benefits on neuroplasticity and BDNF in particular. Number four is ketosis. Now ketosis, as we've talked about in another video, is your body's ability to use fat as a primary fuel source. Now fat, or aka ketones, is an incredible resource and fuel source for your brain to use. It's a very clean and efficient fuel source that reduces inflammation in the brain. So it's a really powerful way to optimize your brain health and performance. And a lot of people notice when they're in a state of ketosis that they are more clear, they're able to be more productive, their brain just works better. It's one of the main reasons I fell in love Love with ketosis and it's been also shown to reduce inflammation in the brain, improve the production of GABA, which is going to help improve your brain's neuroplasticity. Number five is going to be DHA. Now DHA is an omega-3 that's found in your fish oils. That's probably where you're familiar with it from, but there are plenty of studies that show that DHA is not only anti-inflammatory, it actually increases the production of BDNF, which is going to also help increase your rate of neuroplasticity. So don't forget to add DHA into your supplementation schedule. Also number six, really fascinating, is curcumin. Curcumin is this really powerful anti-inflammatory, probably one of the most powerful 
anti-inflammatories available to us through nature. And curcumin in particular has been shown to have profound anti-inflammatory benefits for your brain in particular, but there are also studies that show that curcumin helps preserve healthy brain cells and actually improves the production of BDNF, allowing your brain to be more neuroplastic and be able to enact change quicker and easier than ever before and allow you to be more productive for it. Number seven is going to be fasting. So in particular, intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting in particular has been shown to increase your body's production of BDNF by, get this, anywhere from 50 to even 400% percent, which is absolutely staggering, but it's one of the main reasons that your brain is able to be this high performance brain while fasting. Not only does it increase BDNF, it also increases your rate of autophagy, which is your body's ability to cleanse out those sick and damaged cells that are keeping inflammation stuck in your brain and in your body and robbing your brain and body of optimal performance. And that's also going to help your brain become more neuroplastic because of the BDNF and also the anti-inflammatory benefits thanks to autophagy from an in fasting that's for a whole another video but also as a bonus here another way so I lied to you it's not seven we're actually gonna make it eight number eight is going to be do new things there are plenty of studies that show when your brain starts doing new activities when you learn a new instrument when you travel when you see new things do new things go to new locations your brain is forced to change its own internal map which actually increases your levels of BDNF and helps your brain become more neuroplastic so as if you needed any more excuse to travel there it is. It's going to actually help your brain by traveling. So go ahead, book that vacation because your brain needs it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully this helps give you a pretty good idea of how to increase and hack your brain's own neuroplasticity. And by doing so, you're going to find you're going to be able to be more productive. You're going to be able to learn things quicker and you're just going to have a better life because your brain is quicker to change. It's going to be more efficient and more productive in the long run. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you click that red button, subscribe, and make sure you give this video a thumbs up and we'll see you guys on the next episode of Brain Hacks.